What's up, Reader? Shea Tree Surgeon here, and it's chopper time, baby. Have you ever tried to put a motorcycle on a lift that's about a foot and a half to two feet longer than the lift is? I realize my motorcycle privilege is showing here that I even have a lift, but I'm telling you, this is pretty sketchy. Yeah, I don't know if somebody else who uh, works on choppers more than I do knows how to take care of this, but this was my solution. Because me putting this on the lift looked like a couple of chimpanzees trying to have a nice romantic menage a with a football, okay? It was not a pretty sight. If you guys are unfamiliar with this motorcycle, you've definitely seen it in the background of videos lately. I bought this on a whim for my 40th birthday in West Virginia, and I tried to ride it home, and by gosh, I almost made it. I don't know what I was thinking. I flew in with a one-way ticket and just jumped on this bike that had spent over a decade in the garage and just been ridden around the street every once in a while with tires that had been put on this thing when George Bush was still president, and I attempted to ride it home. Luckily, it wasn't the tires that went out, because that probably would have been much worse, but I did end up losing a coil somewhere in Georgia. I had to call Shay Lisi to come pick me up with a very long trailer. Now, sticking a new coil on this bike, pretty dang easy, and CB750 parts are readily available. One of the reasons that they make great choppers, so really cheap on Facebook Marketplace, I managed to get this for less than $2,000. But the reason I haven't fixed it yet is because I was waiting for this thing to be fixed. I didn't really want to have another failed coil, so we're going Mac fire baby from FNA Customs. You can see his logo right there. He got this old Ard belt driven Magneto firing hot for me and I'm pretty excited to have the old CB back on the road. Now hopefully getting this thing fired up and running with that Magneto is as easy as me saying it but something tells me it probably will be ever so slightly more complicated. Let's dive into it. First off let's get rid of the old stuff. The wiring on these things is horrible. I actually did try putting a new coil on it and it just heated up really hot as soon as I connected the battery so somewhere in this rat's nest of wiring that was done in the 70s and who knows garage somebody did something a little suspect in there so we're just gonna cut all that out hopefully it is as easy as i make it sound that would be really cool obviously we're gonna keep the regulator because we want it to power the lights and also charge the battery so we can still use the e-starter if we want but if we really wanted to get rid of it and have no lights uh, we could just run it on the magneto you don't need any of this they kind of just crammed everything in here these guys really shouldn't be kept that close to the engine with no airflow at all. It will cause them, even if something hadn't come together and created a short, they will fail anyway eventually like that. And now we can go ahead and get rid of this ignition too, since that's where the magneto is going to be hooking up to. I don't know who wired this thing, but I'll tell you, it's one of those jobs where I look at it and I go, this looks like I did it. If you're on a level where it looks like I'm dealing with my own handiwork, then you're doing pretty bad. Well, I just realized while I was doing that, you guys were listening to Ludacris instead of me. Anyway, <laughs> can't put the Magneto on with that oil gauge there. Luckily, I happen to have another CB750 around, and I've got the piece on that one that originally filled that hole. Not that you guys wouldn't want to listen to Ludacris, but now that you're listening to me again, I thought that was going to stop us in our tracks, but luckily, we got a solution. This should work a little bit better now. Maybe. Now this thing might be getting in my way. Looks like it might be all right. That is just going to fit in there. Or maybe just not going to fit in there. Come on. These acorn nuts are super cool, but they are definitely getting in my way. Fun fact about these acorn nuts on old school builds. All these acorn nuts are actually standard sizes. But the threads are still metric because back in the day, you just had to make your own because they didn't make them for metric builds. So they would actually make these and put the metric threads on them. Really weird. But I guess that was all you could do back in the day. But it's gonna be covered up anyway. This is just gonna have the most ridiculous mix of standard and metric nuts and bolts on it. Oh well. All right, we got an M5 up here and a 7 16 down here. Definitely coming together like one of uh, one of my builds. And maybe they had me in mind the whole time. They know I love to <laughs> just love to mix up that metric and standard stuff. Only because I'm an idiot, though. <sighs>
little break here because we had to run up to old Burt's Barracuda. And I can't go up to Burt's Barracuda without checking out what they got on the floor. You know me, I always go to the side of the building and want to see what they got when it comes to uh, very cheap used metric bikes. Yeah, Burt says they'll take anything on trade as long as they don't have to feed it and they mean it. Okay, the fact that there's a fuel cell turbocharged stretched GSXR drag bike that they took in on trade, yeah, I guess it would be street legal. It still has a headlight, but this is definitely a drag bike. So if you're looking to get into drag racing, I guess this is plug and play over here. Turbo GSXR is a side. You guys know that uh, a gold wing will always catch my eye. This one's definitely what we'll call tarnished beauty. This 1981 has definitely seen better days, but it does start if not drive very well. I assume like most old gold wings, it needs the carbs tuned is what everyone likes to say, but it needs the carbs to be rebuilt. So if you're confident rebuilding gold wing carbs, they're selling this bike for 1500 bucks. Give them a call. Make sure you talk to my man, Brian. So if you're looking for a cheap gold with a lot of rare parts on it that would shine up nice, this could definitely be your thing. There's a lot of 80s gold wings for sale out there, but when I look for one, I always look for one with rare parts that you can't get anymore, and this one is covered in them. All these parts would have come out of the drag specialties catalog back in the day when they did a lot of gold wing stuff in the 80s, but they really don't do it anymore. I think they might still make a few parts. Pretty much you're out of luck when it comes to these crazy chrome parts that make these look like new school Coney Island bikes, and that's why. I love them. So this one's definitely a project, so know what you're getting into. You're not going to fly in and ride it home. But as far as one that's worth restoring and worth bringing back to its once former glory, I think it's a really good candidate for that. Now, I do believe it actually starts, but let's see. Turns on at least. It does run though. This one's gonna be a project. 1500 bucks is the price that's on it. I'd call and make an offer. Little pit stop at Burt's to check out some Hondas over there, but now let's get back to the Honda in my garage. Had to take a little break last night while I was working on it because I needed spark plug boots to connect to the Magneto down here. Now that I have them, let's make this thing run. So here's a mistake I've made before, not sticking this through the spark plug boot before I try to put a terminal on it. There we go. Nice actual copper wires, not this freaking fiberglass stuff that does not work as well, trust me. Ask me how I know. At least it doesn't work as well with magnetos. I think maybe with uh, some other stuff it works pretty good. I just put the wrong side on. Wow, dude. <laughs> Had it been so painful, somebody watching that knew what they were doing for to watch me do this. Yikes, dude. Luckily, I bought a make a spark plug kit for a V8 and I only need four. So I could still mess up, theoretically, a few more times and it'd be all right. Right? Right. <laughs> Gosh, that was dumb. All right, now let's try this the right way. Probably not the dumbest thing I've done. Maybe not even the dumbest thing I've done today. Cool. Yes, that's gonna work out just fine. Cool. All right, let's do that three more times. All right, now let's hook them up. These are labeled one, two, three, four, and I'm hoping it's one, two, three, four across. So starting at the left, you know, this isn't the actual firing order. It's just one, two, three, four. What's the worst that could happen? All right, time for the moment of truth. Do we have spark? All right, let's go ahead and pull a spark plug, see if we actually have spark or not. Cause it doesn't sound like it. Or if we do have spark, maybe it's sparking at the wrong time. No spark. Oh, I'm calling it quits once again without a running motorcycle and probably due to my own stupidity, not as sure exactly what is going on right now, but I do know that I have failed to make this Magneto work. I'm not throwing any spark on my bench test. It was recently rebuilt, so I gotta figure it's probably something I'm doing. Don't know. So I'm gonna take that Magneto back there to my good buddy Weems house and have him give it the once over because when it comes to Magnetos, he knows a whole lot more about them than I do. And when it comes 
comes to motorcycles, more about them than I do. When it comes to pretty much life in general, I think he knows a lot more than I do. Anyway, here's to uh, having good friends that know more than you. Uh, make sure you treat them right and buy them beer every occasion you get, because you never know when you're gonna have to call them up, which in my case is often. You know, I always do try to fix it myself before I ask for help, but eventually I'm gonna break something. <laughs> break something worse anyway. That's good. That's wow, <laughs> you see, this is why I stopped. <laughs> Getting shocked is scary. It's throwing power. So nothing. You can't let it up. The ground is working. It's, so it's something in the cap. It's, it's not, not close enough. It's not sending sparks. So just pull that out. That a easy. Bit. When a magneto goes out, nine times out of ten, it's points. And then if it's not points, then it's coil. And if you guys think that magnetos are magic, I promise you they're. They are. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are magic. Uh, and I would say my my very first experience with a magneto was not on a motorcycle. It was when I learned how to fix lawnmowers. Because <laughs> if oh, yeah. if you have a lawnmower in your garage right now you own oh well, not a vehicle you own an engine with a magneto so we're getting a spark in three freaking might have been just as easy as that thing not being bent out enough huh see all you had to do was take it apart and look at it man and it freaking scared itself back into working yeah. <laughs> no magneto would dare not work around you because you wasted my time <laughs> hold the end of that <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw myself back into the gauntlet of traffic and try to get that CB750 running, which Jared also just gave me some awesome parts for. Make sure you're subscribed to my man Weems Motor Co. Not only does he help me out a lot, but he provides amazing content for 100% free. But you can subscribe to his Patreon if you would like. And uh, that used to be a motorcycle this morning. Keep your eyes peeled for that. We're gonna do the unveiling at the Burt's Invitational Show. He's gonna unveil it at the OCC Invitational. We'll of course be there hanging out, drinking beers and having a good time. It's nice to be do going to a show that's in my hometown rather than driving hours and hours away to go visit other cool people like you. If you've been to a bunch of cool chopper shows in other states, chances are you've seen Weems Motor Co there. If you're up in the frozen tundra, I'll be at Mama Tried here in February. So swing by Mama Tried, check it out. And it's gonna be a good time. Flat out Friday racing. Ooh, I'm gonna try to be there too. We'll see what happens. Let me know when you fire up that Honda. I will. Ah, Jared Weems, what a good dude. Helping me work on Harleys, Yamahas, and Hondas all the time when all he really wants to mess around with is English bikes. Keep threatening to build a chopper with Weems. I'm gonna have to make good on that thread eventually. It's stuck behind a few different things in my storage unit, but let me tell you what, there's a lot of weird stuff happening in the world of Rapstar right now. With Shay Tree Surgeon and Shay Lisi, things are all up in the air. It's a kerfuffle, it's a mix up. Pretty crazy time right now, but we're moving towards it not being a crazy time and being able to make even better content and being able to tackle some of these projects that have been put on the back burner because the past four years of my life uh, I feel like I'm still trying to recover from right now and I feel like we're on the precipice on the cusp we're edgy baby and about to burst but we're we're edgy recovery so we're going into a good thing I'm glad I replaced those brakes. Now, normally I see a red light just as a suggestion, but when they got that little white camera above it, uh, you know, I don't want to take it in the mail. So I take it a little more seriously. Now, didn't I say I was going to replace these tires before I really started riding around the tour glide? Well, it's hard. The engine's running so good. It shifts perfectly. It starts right up. You know, the tires, I can't even see the tires from where I'm at right now. All I can experience is how amazing that it's running. So it's hard not to ride it. Pulling onto the highway with confidence on a shovel head that doesn't always happen but it happens on this bike and that's pretty freaking cool man although maybe i shouldn't be quite this confident with the tires that are on this bike but what the hell baby let's roll the dice well maybe just this one last time i really need to change these tires you can rest assured whoever ends up winning this motorcycle because yes we are still giving it away you will have brand new rubber well brand new rubber minus a couple hundred miles that i put on them anyway so with this bike we initially went to something called harness which a lot of people are excited about it gives people a way to enter into raffles that doesn't cost very much money like it can cost you pennies a month because a lot of people want to help forgotten angels they believe in the mission they believe in the cause and you know they also want to be entered to win these prizes but they don't have the money to buy 25 dollars raffle tickets which is okay i mean that's why i always tell people like if you don't have 25 bucks like don't stretch yourself thin to buy a raffle ticket to win something or to help out forgotten angels you know if you don't have 25 bucks you need to focus on helping yourself with harness that kind of gave everybody 
everybody a chance at very, very, very low, just like I said, like pennies. They gave everybody a chance to know that they were monetarily helping Forgotten Angels in their mission to end the cycle of abuse in the foster care system and also entered to win the prizes like this motorcycle right here. Well, I've been getting a ton of emails and a lot of comments and a lot of people saying that they they don't want to do harness and they really still want like just a regular raffle. The harness isn't going to change. If you were entered in harness, you are absolutely, you are set up, you are in this raffle, you're in every single raffle Forgotten Angels ever does if you are signed up for harness no matter what. But I think we are going to open up another raffle creator to let people either buy extra tickets and which uh, of course 100% of that goes to Forgotten Angels. It doesn't go anywhere else. So that's going to be for the people who are out of the country because yes, you can enter this if you live outside of the United States. It's for people who don't want to do a recurring monthly thing because I get it even though it's only a few cents here and there and you can set caps. I get that some people just do not do recurring monthly stuff and I, I get that. I understand. So for the people who don't want to do that, you can buy individual raffle tickets and for the people who really, really love the beige malaise and you just want to buy a couple extra tickets so you have a few more chances on it, well, I guess it's going to be for you too. I think we are going to lower it from $25 so it's not going to be $25 a ticket anymore because it's just, again, I'm not trying to be Mr. Freaking touchy feely here, but I want to be inclusive with people who don't have a lot to donate. For a lot of people, 25 bucks is just too steep of a price, and it's not that's not me talking crap. If somebody has extra ten dollars that they want to donate, they still want a chance at this motorcycle. I want them to be able to do it. And it's not because I'm trying to scrounge every dollar here for Forgotten Angels. That's not the case. Because people genuinely want to support Forgotten Angels. I just want people to be able to do it in a way that does not negatively financially impact them. But you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? This is about making people financially stable. So if you're making yourself financially unstable to help Forgotten Angels and help them help kids who age out of the foster care system been made homeless and you're putting yourself in a bad situation to do that, don't do that. Don't put yourself in a bad situation. Creating a problem to help solve a problem. We don't want to do that. So I'm trying to make it a lower price point. We're going to do it a little easier, but we are going to sell extra tickets for the old beige malaise by popular demand. I originally had no intent to do this, but I've just gotten like dozens upon dozens of emails and comments and requests that we still make that available. So we still are going to make that available. And again, it's all for charity. It all goes to Forgotten Angels. I don't take a single dime from this. In fact, all the repairs to this bike, all the stuff that had to be done to it, I pay for all of that stuff out of my own pocket. Myself and Shay Lisi pay for all that stuff. The money to fix the bikes doesn't even come from Forgotten Angels. That comes from Brap Star and the Shade Tree Army Patreon. That's where that money comes from. So it's not like we're trying to like, oh, let's get some more money so we can get better bikes or fix them up a different way or something like that. That's not the case. A hundred percent of it. When I say a hundred percent, I mean a hundred percent. Not even the cost of the motorcycle and the parts to fix it. A hundred percent of it goes to Forgotten Angels. I don't know if we'll have that raffle creator ready by the time this video comes out, but if we do, I'll have some text on the screen right about now saying that it's linked down below. Officially day three of trying to make this thing make a noise. Well, a noise besides the starter. Luckily, I've got friends that are smarter than me. Because if I didn't have friends smarter than me, I'd be up shit creek without a turd for a paddle. Turns out all that was wrong with this Magneto that Eric from FNA Customs rebuilt was I didn't have the tab bent forward enough to make contact. So I got a little embarrassed over at Weems house, but luckily he's a good guy on top of being smarter than me, so it didn't make me feel too bad. Once more, with vigor. <laughs> yes, we got spark, baby. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me Reba McIntyre. Let's get this thing running. Can we get a brap? Let's see. It's okay, it hasn't run in a minute. Let's give it a little bit of uh, encouragement. Well, I had the gas off, but that doesn't always mean that there wasn't enough gas sitting in those carbs to get it gummed up a little bit. Come on now. Oh, my battery pack's almost dying. So I'm worried that since these are resistor spark plugs and resistor spark plug caps that I'm not creating a strong enough spark to actually fire anything off. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and directly wire them in, which is what most people do when they have magnetos anyway. Just gonna take a little more splicing and crimping and cutting and all of that. We just wanna make sure we got the hottest spark possible. Some heat shrink here too, will just help me provide a little bit extra strength to that connection. 
and a little bit of water protection as well. So this is temporary only. I just need to eliminate all the factors here. There we go. As I was telling you guys, there's big changes coming to Brap Star Garage. I had to step away from that CB750 for a second. <sighs> Real big changes. Some of them we're happy about, some of them not so much. But a lot of different stuff is coming soon. Bittersweet, y'all. Yeah, very bittersweet. But them's the brakes. After that sad farewell, and I got fire. You're just not firing inside on the CB750. I think it's about time to see what's behind door number three. We got good spark, good connection, and everything else is as it should be. We got to assume that the issue lies in the timing. Now, is this sucker going to come off or what? I'm also starting to hate these damn acorn nuts. The way these acorn nuts work where they're a standard size but with metric threads, they basically just hand threaded in studs and then tighten the acorn nuts on top of them. Really not a great design. Oh, come on, man. Does this whole thing have to come off? I thought maybe this, this was a cover, but I guess the whole thing's gotta come off. Oh, who looks stupid now? It's me, that's who, <laughs> as usual. It, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. That's, why is that full of oil? I mean, is that cover, is this cover supposed to come off? God damn it. Oh, I hope if I knew anything about CB750s, huh? I assumed, much like my XS650, that this stator would be dry instead of wet. And I was wrong. Well, alrighty then. Whew. I have made a mistake. I was, Approaching this like it was my XS650, and it is not. This is a different motorcycle, and I was stupid for pulling this off. That's frustrating. There's nothing like having to clean up a mess you made to really rub your nose in the fact that you messed up. That's all I can stand. I can't stand no more. After cleaning up my mess and just sitting here and existentially staring at the CB750, I came to a couple decisions, especially after, you know, watching those other bikes leave and cruising on Facebook Marketplace. And I came across an ad on there of someone saying that they were willing to trade for CB750 parts and motorcycles. So I think that's where I'm heading right now. Oh, well, I'm out here in Legoland and I got the CB750 in tow to see what there is for trade. It's been a frustrating day and it sucks to let it go, but hey baby, I never even heard the thing run. Come on, you didn't think I was gonna get rid of that other CB, did you? It takes more than that to make me quit. I did have some cool plans for that other girder CB750, but hey baby, when something comes up that's this good of a trade and they're willing to trade for a CB750, I can't say no. And besides, we're not losing a motorcycle, we're keeping the number the same. You know, guys, I'm usually the poster child for film your failures. Call me Mr. Failure if you want, but this one took something else out of me. With everything else that's been going on in my life right now, and it's been pretty hectic, not so hectic that I can't handle it, I'm fine, but it's been so hectic that trying to get this CB750 running, which I wanna ride so bad, I love this motorcycle, and I just had to have the Magneto on it because I love Magnetos, and I was just kicking myself in the head because I'm going, man, I messed this up, I should have just gone with the traditional ignition, I'm an idiot, and I, just, I can't figure it out, and and I had to go see Weems Motor Co and get his help and I'm still beating my head against the wall. This has been, by the way, since the beginning of this video, it's been a week. As I said, not just a week working on this bike and doing everything else I normally do, but a week also dealing with all the other crap that I got on my plate right now. So it's been, it's been kind of a tough week. I'm not, I'm trying not to be a whiner, but it's been a little bit of a tough week. And I cannot deny, just like a lot of you guys out there, a lot of times I use these motorcycles as an avatar for myself. When I have no control over my life, life and things are spinning sideways and I wish I could just fix everything going on in my life. I know I can exact control over something mechanical. I can make something mechanical run again and I feel some semblance of control flood back into my body. But when I'm failing on both counts, it just goes doubly bad. 
I hate to bring up this meme graphic because it's so old, but that meme template where it's a woman and a man, they're lying in bed, facing away from each other, like they're having some sort of fight. And in her thought bubble, it's saying like, I bet he's thinking about other women and thinking about all these problems and all these crazy scenarios and what might be wrong. Did I say the wrong thing? Am I getting fat? And just, you know, being crazy overthinking it. And in the man's speech bubble, it's just motorcycle won't start, can't figure out why. And that's why he's sad and distant. And that's not just men. There's a lot of women out there that are like that too, but any of you guys who ever struggle with your own mental health issues know that when you use your motorcycle on as an avatar for yourself and fix this when you can't fix yourself to exact some control in your life, when you can't do that too, you know it's tough and you know it can mess with you. So like I said, I've been taking this kind of hard, not so hard I can't handle it. I'm not sitting here crying into my Wheaties in the morning or anything like that. I'm still a grown ass man, but it's been annoying to say the least. On top of having to have this Magneto rebuilt by Eric from FNA Customs, then having to take it to Weems because I didn't do something right when I was putting it together. On top of that, I also called up my very close friend, Joe the Mountain Jedi, to come over here and help me get this thing running. And I don't like doing that, not because he's not willing to help me and not because he doesn't love helping me and not because I don't love hanging out with him, but I don't like calling him on work nights. He works all day at the ride factory, puts in a 10 hour shift, wrenching on bikes, doesn't go home to his wife, shout out to Amanda, by the way, we love you. Uh, <laughs> if you ever need a fantasy novel recommendation, hit up the wife unit. She's got some good ones. And anyway, doesn't go home to his wife, comes over here, hangs out with me and works on my stuff. And I'm just, I don't like to do that to him. So that sucked too. And then we just, we couldn't get it running either. Too many variables. It was late at night. The spark plugs were roached. And, and we just kind of had to admit, like, we'll just come back to this later because we've all got so much other stuff going on in our lives right now. And I agreed with him. He was right. You know, it still is just, it was still frustrating. Nothing to do with him, of course. I was encouraging him to step away from it because I don't like doing that to my friends. What now with the CB750? Where do I go from here? You know, after this frustrating week trying to get this thing to make a noise and well, as the old saying goes, even a broken clock is right twice a day. God damn it. That was supposed to start. That was supposed to look way cooler. It's hot even. I swear to God. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, dude, you're making me look bad. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. I swear to Bob. Feels pretty good, man. Now, when I say a broken clock is right twice a day, what I really mean is that broken clock only gets to be right twice a day because he has friends who are much smarter than he is and are willing to help him because I could not have done this without the help of Eric at FNA Customs, Weems Motor Co., and Joe the Mountain Jedi. And we're not done yet. Weems is still coming over to help me fine tune the timing on that Magneto. But even still, I'm gonna call this one a win, baby. I'm gonna call it a win. More on what's going on with everything in my life later. I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging on that one. I realized I didn't show what I traded the other CB750 for, so I'm gonna show you that too. I'm not leaving you hanging on that one either. We'll get to that, trust me. Oh guys, I ain't gonna lie to you. It's been a hell of a week, but that's all right. If I really look back and think about it, I've had worse weeks. Besides, all this change, all this upheaval, it's all going towards something good. Just stick with me, I promise you. We're gonna end on something positive. In fact, we're ending today on something positive, and that's this 1982 Shovelhead Tour Glide FLT rubber mounted five speed, the best shovel head that you could ever buy. Arguably, of course, but from a technical standpoint, the best shovel head you could ever buy. And this shovel head could be your shovel head. We're gonna be pulling the winner for this soon. If you don't do harness, you don't wanna mess with harness, I'll have a link to buy a raffle ticket for this bike down below. And of course, if you are signed up for harness, you are entered not only for this bike, but for every bike that 
Forgotten Angels ever gives away. As always, I appreciate the hell out of you guys showing up for Forgotten Angels. It's an amazing cause. David and Cindy, they are helping change the world. We are helping to change the world. These young men and young women that are put into foster care and abused by their families and then, you know, abused by the system, taken advantage of the people who are supposed to help them afterwards and then made homeless and put through horrors that I can't comprehend. A lot of you guys out there who watch have told me that you've been through foster care so that you know what they've been through. So every raffle ticket you buy and every penny that gets donated to Forgotten Angels through Harness, that's going directly to help those kids. Well, they're not kids. They're adults, young adults. I mean, they're still kids. I was a kid till I was 25. Let's be real here. And in fact, I still pretty much feel like a kid all the time. Anyway, Forgotten Angels is a pretty amazing place and they're giving these kids their first chance. You know, they never even had their first chance. They never got a chance at all. Helping them build their lives and build them tiny homes and get them bank accounts and fix their credit and do everything that their parents should have done. And when their parents failed, everything that the programs put in by the state should have done and they failed. So third time's a charm, baby. It's up to us now. And I, I think we're doing what we can. And every dollar might win you this bike, but even if it doesn't win you the motorcycle, it's still a win because you know it's going to a good cause. We're having the Forgotten Angels camp out in March and you can come there yourself and talk to Dave and Cindy and see exactly what your cash has been doing. It feels pretty good, man. Everybody who's been to the camp out knows that it's a really, really good feeling. Everything that's going on in my personal life and Shaylee's personal life and everything like that and this upheaval that's gonna leave us, you know, not homeless, but displaced for a little while. Well, we'll have more updates on that later. I'm gonna try to keep our video schedule up. I do not like to miss an upload, but I can't guarantee it'll stay steady with everything that's going on right now. Again, I am fine, I promise you. Better than fine, and I'm not in trouble. I just kinda gotta get through this and uh, we'll talk more about it later. That link for this bike is down below and maybe Karma will point at you today and it's your lucky day. We'll be pulling that ticket in a couple weeks. Until next time, keep it weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Evil taking flight. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Panic spreading far and wide. Can the world oppose the deadliest of foes? Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Who will risk it all to end the evil call of shade tree? Army. Shade tree. Army. They never give up. They never say die. Walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.